our days start really early and usually end pretty late during the busy season. We have a lot of different responsibilities that fall into our daily activities. Usually starts by coming in and setting up the retail and getting ready in there. And then it quickly shifts to our processing room, which is where we process all of our stone crabs. Each crab claw has to be weighed and sorted by size, which is how we pay the fishermen on a daily basis. And then it shifts usually back to the retail for the busy time. And then about two, three o'clock in the afternoon on an average day, the fishermen start coming in and my attention shifts back to them. Uh, they need to, all their product needs to be weighed and sorted and we have to give them gas and diesel and help them whatever supplies they need. If they need um, paychecks or statements, I'm responsible for all of that. Um, once a week I do fishermen statements which entails recording every pound that comes across our dock to the state through a program we call the trip ticket program. So every pound of stone crabs they catch or grouper or snapper, whatever it is they're bringing in, I have to report to the state and that helps keep the biologist in check and how knowing how the species is doing, how the health of the species and comparing year to year catches. So when the fishermen come back to the dock after crabbing all day, they bring me their crab claws, which are just the claws broken off. The crab body itself goes back into the water. And I weigh them and I tag them. So each fisherman is cooked with just their own crabs. They're not cooked all in one big mass. They go into a big vat of boiling water, which is powered by a steam jenny. And they're boiled for four to five minutes, depending on the size of the batch of crabs and the quantity of water and all these things play a factor but each crab claw has to reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees to be considered fully cooked. They're then removed from the uh, boiling water and put into an ice bath to stop the cooking process because that shell is so thick they have to go into a cold bath to stop that otherwise the meat inside the shell will continue cooking and then from there they're then put into our walk-in coolers overnight which is where they finish the chilling process and they come down to an internal temperature of 40 degrees or lower within two hours of being cooked, which is an important process because if they don't do that, then the meat can stick to the shell, the quality of the crab isn't as good, and it's not top quality product like we offer. Then the following morning, we go into the, the sorting or the grading of the sizes. We sell a medium, which is a claw that is up to three ounces, a large, which is a three to five ounce, a jumbo, which is a five to seven ounce, and a colossal, which is a seven ounce or better. So the biggest size is almost a half pound or better. It's completely sustainable. The idea behind a stone crab is it's a crustacean, so it molts its shell. We're able to take a claw off without hurting the crab and killing it we throw it back and as the next time it molts its shell, it will regrow a new claw. The reason we have a season for stone crabs is because we let them be, we pull all of our traps out of the water come May 15th so that they have the summer to spawn and mate. Each female, when she starts carrying a sponge or it's a basically an egg sack, she can have one to three million eggs in that individual sack. So each female, each time she produces a sponge, is carrying anywhere from one to three million baby crabs. Not all of them will survive, obviously, but if a female crab has three or four sponges throughout the course of her life, that's putting in several million eggs back into the system, back into the product. I don't see us ever running out of stone crabs. I think that they'll always be around. Okay, I think it could have been a lot worse if all of our boats survived just fine. The only damage we had to any of our boats is one of their windows blew out. So nothing major, you know, it could have been a lot worse. I mean, I think it's important to say that, you know, it's a national thing and Mother Nature recovers really well from hurricanes. It's like a wildfire. Sometimes it has to happen to start fresh and to give everything a chance to flourish.